Hi guys, my name is Kirsty and welcome back to Upside Down Books and today we're going to be checking in on where I'm at with my reading challenges for 2023. <laughs> I have changed to a slightly different angle in the room, which is why you're looking at something slightly different. I have literally moved from one corner to another because I think I prefer looking this way. So anyway, you guys get to look at some different books, so enjoy that. And this is my Agatha Christie selection, or collection even, so you can double enjoy that because, well, I do. It may be September, maybe mid-September, maybe towards the end of September, and I may be doing something that should have been done as a mid-year check-in, but nonetheless we're here and we are going to be doing it today. I realised today I got out my handy dandy grid journal um, in which I am keeping my 2023 reading goals and you can watch that video here if you haven't seen what I am trying to achieve and track for 2023. Um, these are my yearly reading goals and yeah I pulled it out and I, I realised um, that I haven't really been updating this slash tracking it very closely which is not surprising because it's been a really busy year for me anyway so far but I thought now might be a good idea that we can go through it together um, and I can talk you through where I'm at with the whole thing so let's dive in on the whole this year my goal has been to just enjoy reading do a bit more mood reading and really focus on reading for me so that has meant continuing my little mission of trying to reduce the amount that I'm reviewing for publishers or indie authors which I think I've only done maybe two or three books for publishers this year um, and no indie authors so I'm doing a really good job with that and I've been trying to focus on the goals that really matter to me and when I've had time to read I've still read like a really good number of books in fact that's the first thing um, I could talk about I have read I believe I'm at 60 let's check that 61 so I have read 61 books this year already um, which I'm actually really quite I'm, I'm both proud and surprised by it I decided to not do a Goodreads reading challenge this year just because I I, found, I achieved reading 100 books last year. It was like a bucket list goal of mine to prove that if I wanted to with enough determination I could read 100 books and I did it and it was um, really satisfying but also absolutely draining and it's not something I want to try and achieve every year so I wanted to completely remove the pressure to achieve um, any sort of difficult reading challenge so I actually set a nominal challenge of 12 books of which I've obviously surpassed and I was very curious to see if I would end up reading a similar amount more or less without a challenge there sort of propelling me on was the challenge actually pushing me forward or was it holding me back because it was stressful but at 61 books I would say that I'm probably going to end somewhere between 70 and 80 for the year uh, I guess we'll find out at the end of the year and that seems to be quite a happy medium if not quite a good reading year for me so we'll see and I usually am tracking that through this spread here this is just a little like um, visual way for me to track it I draw a little bookshelf and then I have numbers along the shelving um, and I write in the title and I color it according to my rating I have only done the first 19 oh no that's not true I've done the first 25 books of the year but I haven't colored in since book 19 so I'm a little bit overdue to, um, updating that spread which is going to be a mammoth effort now but I will I've got enough room for 125 books so I do that so that I don't go, oh, I'm only going to read 60 and then I run out of room and then you annoyingly have to draw more things. So I've got maximum capacity. I don't think I can read 125 books in a year. Book 61 will be the very last book on the first spread. So this whole page will be coloured in with books. Um, and that's quite satisfying. It's really, really satisfying at the end of the year to look back on this one and see it go from this sort of empty template to something that is just gradually filled in book by book obviously but nonetheless satisfying to do. That's meant that I've left most of my reading energy focused towards the other challenges many of which have rolled on or are similar echoes of challenges that I've done previously and one I've done really bad on is my friends challenge. So that one is this challenge here where I've asked friends and family to give me book recommendations off my TBR that they would challenge me to read in 2023 and I have done none so it's not filled in and that is actually accurate. I'm actually a little bit disappointed that in September I've not even ticked off one of them. People went to the effort of actually going through my whole TBR on Goodreads and picking out a book that caught their eye and I was very motivated to do this one. I thought this would be really fun uh, and I'm very very grateful that people went to the effort to do this but con considering there are like 500 books on that list but I've just not done it and I think that's because 
the effort it has taken this year to change the next goals that I'm going to talk about, which is the Christmas challenge and my birthday challenge, to being the month immediately following rather than 11 months after. That's taken up a lot of my energy and time for challenges, so it has left me a little bit like lacking in free time to then focus on these bonus challenges. So we'll see if I get around to them. If not, I'll probably keep these recommendations and put them into 2024's challenges and see how I go next year. I'm trying not to beat myself up too much about this one, but I'm very, very aware that I have not got there. So the challenges are to read it as um, as old as time, which is a Twisted Tales retelling, The Little French Bookshop, The Way of Kings Part 1, The Woman of Chateau Lafayette, which is quite a big historical fiction, Ariadne, The Personal Librarian, and Law. So moving on to the Christmas spread, these are all the books that I received in Christmas 2022. The plan for this, um, which I did try to pivot um, for Christmas this year, but I really struggled actually, was that I used to get all the books at Christmas and for my birthday, and then I would just expect that I would read some of these over the year, and then the month before the next Christmas, so that would be Christmas this year in December 2023, I would have like a blast of an effort throughout um, the weeks leading up to Christmas to read whatever was left over. I've done this for quite a number of years, I think I've done it since 2019, so four years, and I found that that has just really not worked, uh, particularly because Hopefully both my birthday and Christmas fall um, on the 25th and the 27th, so at the very end of the month, but it does mean that you get about three and a half or three weeks Ish, um, to actually get that reading done and when you get a lot of presents in the year before and then you haven't made any concerted effort throughout the year to get through some of them. I just I've ended up too many times with the entire list still to get through and I never conquer it. So I've swept I've swept it over apparently. I switched it over so that it'll be the month following. So in January's I read the Christmas challenges and in June's I read my birthday challenge as my birthday's in May. Now I didn't do a good job in January this year um, but I have read the entire How to Train Your Dragon series which is what all of the coloured books are up at the top. Um, and at the moment, the only other one I've got coloured in is the Penelope ad. Going through it, there are still 22 books that are uncoloured. And having a quick look through... Oh wow, I actually thought I was, thought I was going to tell you, but I've read a few more, seeing as we know that I have not been tracking all the books since quite a while on here, but I don't think I have read any of the other ones. I am reading Fairy Tale at the moment, that's taken me a while to get through, and that was from Chris, it's on this list. And a lot of the books that are on the Friends recommendations, I'm just now remembering, were actually Christmas books. So maybe I will end up taking this Friends challenge off towards the end of the year, but yeah, I don't think there is a single other book. So to give you the quick run through, and I'm going to put little images up here because I can't be bothered pulling them off my shelves because I'm feeling a bit lazy. Um, that's The Orphans, Gilded, The Red Knight, This Woven Kingdom, Luck of the Titanic, Beasts of Prey, the Personal Librarian, The Women of Chateau Lafayette, Song of the Sun God, Dangerous Women, the illustrated edition of The Order of the Phoenix, The Inner Life of Animals, Kate in Waiting, Dance of Thieves, Long Live the Pumpkin Queen, Fairy Tale, The Jane Austen Society, The Left-Handed Booksellers of London, The Way of Kings Part 1, The Little French Bookshop, Layla and The Happiness Project. So good luck to me. I Because I have got so many left over, I am kind of still planning to double up and try and read lots of these as I get closer to Christmas um, rather than just abandoning this challenge just because these challenges mean a lot to me because these are gifts that have been given to me so we'll see I'm, I'm kind of I'm not sure I've successfully swapped the challenge around um, but more that I might have bullied myself or guilt tripped myself into just doubling up but hey look they're all books to be enjoyed. So looking at the birthday challenge for 2022, I had fewer books then from the Christmas haul, um, so that looks more achievable. None were coloured in the last time I checked in with this. Um, let's see, have I done any of them? I have done a few because I did um, make a good effort in May to get through some of them. So I have read Lifelike, Only Mostly Devastated, Lessons in Chemistry, Ice Wolves, and Bravely. So I did a reasonably good job considering how busy I was because we were moving into this house. That leaves me with nine more books to go and I had sort of read them through May and then I moved on to some of the birthday books I got this year and have still been trying to you know, keep looking back and filling in some of these. So the, and that means that the remaining ones um, are The Forgotten Garden, Little Women, The Boy with the Blue Trousers, Rebecca, The Colour of Dragons, Little Thieves, Eleanor and Park, the Alice Network and An Arrow to the Moon. So there's still a few, but they really sound 
great. I'm quite excited for that lineup. I'm unsure how I'm going to track um, my birthday challenges like for this year from what I got because I never, never got the chance to do a birthday book haul for you. I wonder if I can, hang on, let me bring up my spreadsheet on my phone and I can tell you where I'm currently sitting with my challenge from 2023. So going forward, typically, I will only be updating you where I'm at um, with the challenge for the birthday of this year. I know it's all very confusing, but hopefully you're all keeping up. So for this year, for my birthday, I received 18 books and so far I have read five of them. That's actually like amazing statistic wise for me, considering it's only a few months gone sort of since my birthday. Um, so out of the 18, I've read Imogen, obviously. Um, I'm counting Sense and Sensibility as read. I didn't technically read the copy I got, but I have read it and I read it last year. So, you know, we're going to let me have that one. Um, the Adventures of Amina al-Sarafi, The Isle of the Gods and Evergreen. And I'm currently reading Dragonfall, which is one of them. And that leaves me with Clytemnestra, The Earth Transformed, Chaos and Flame, Shades of Rust and Ruin, Glitterati, The Silent Patience, The Kiss of Deception, German Wife, See You Yesterday, Weather Girl, A Hunger of Thorns, and The Bookbinder of Jericho. So uh, in a way, the original intention was to simply go in June, I'll be reading the books, but I think I've actually been enjoying just going more actively over the next 11 months I'll be reading them. Anyway, let's stop talking about the statistics and logistics of that challenge because it is somewhat confusing, but I feel like I'm not doing terribly. I'm kind of happy with where I'm at. I'll be curious to see how far I get with the Christmas challenge by the time, with my Christmas books from last year, by the time that this year's Christmas rolls around. The next spread was the series to slay in 2023. So I sort of picked out some key um, series that I wanted to try and finish off this year that I wasn't too far from. Now, I did finish How to Train Your Dragon and I have finished the Skyward series by Brandon Sanderson. Those are the top two there that you can see. Um, I thought that I would have a good crack at the Famous Five, which is the next line down. Haven't started it. And then I've got a bunch of duologies and trilogies. Um, and I don't think I've honestly made a whole heap of effort. I, at the start of, not effort, but progress, at the start of the year I did a really good job of just ticking off quite a lot. Um, but again, I've petered out a little bit towards the end. I have just caught up and slash finished Outlander. There will be another book, but it counts as finished if I catch up. I don't know if I had this on here, but as that wasn't, that's not all published, I actually don't think I listed it. Nonetheless, that was a colossal effort. Yeah, no, I haven't actually made any more progress with any of these series um, since I last checked in with it. So I just find it so hard. I've been trying to motivate myself with different sort of rewards with my reading challenge or my reading tracker and the way that I track my buying capacity on like my book buying regime thing. Um, and that works to a degree, but again, I don't know, I've just been not reading huge quantities of stuff and I guess the, the probably the simplest answer and the most honest answer is it's really hard to make a lot of progress in every challenge so if I'm making progress in one that's probably all I have capacity for but anyway I will forever be trying to finish more series so we're just gonna have to see how we go. The next spread was the NADOC week challenge now if you watch my goals video you know that this is um, around a week slash month um, but specifically the week where we celebrate Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples and culture in Australia and this was literally right over moving and I was barely reading anything so I had lined up four books this was the very reason this is the most realistic goal I set just four books to try and ch tackle in that month which was around um, June July time and I haven't read any of the ones I listed here, but I did read a different one, um, so that was still a tick. I read Benang by Kim Scott. It was actually for work, but it was, that is still a really poignant and an award-winning book. It won the Miles Franklin Award, so that was great to have read and experienced that book. Even if it wasn't one of the four I had listed, it was still one that was on my TBR. Um, and obviously for work as well, that was great to read. So I'll probably just keep rolling these over for next year and try again, uh, because that was really fun to try and theme my reading around that. I just have to hope that next year it'll fall at a better time and a slightly quieter time for me. Then we have my classics challenge. That is this spread here. Now this is almost always on my list to try every year. I'm focused on classics. And I think only like last year, this year, I would say I've been like actually enjoying them. And I have made some challenge with this, which is very exciting. I have just finished reading Dracula. So it took a little bit of time to build up the courage to do that. I did it via audiobook. I didn't love love Dracula. I have to say I was um, more underwhelmed than I thought I would be. 
if that makes sense. I was hoping to love it as much as I love Frankenstein, I didn't. And that leaves me with Little Women, Great Expectations and Rebecca. There's a good chance that Little Women and Rebecca could get done because they're on other challenges as well. I'm not really expecting I will get to Great Expectations, but I never conquer the classics challenge. They are hard to read, they are big commitments. So the fact that I have ticked off one, I'm pretty happy with. I also had this spread which was meant to just be like a visual tree tracker of the books I read per month. This isn't a challenge per se, this is just a fun way to track it so I thought I'd show you where, what it looks like but obviously it needs to be updated with a number of more books than it already has. I then had like my top genres tracker so I had four, um, I had fantasy, historical fiction slash general fiction, science fiction and non-fiction as the categories done in like Hogwarts house, um, like hourglass trackers for um, like the four houses, help me. you know what I'm talking about. And again, I'm curious to see when I actually catch up and fill this in, how that's going to look. At the beginning of the year, it was fantasy heavy, and I'm pretty sure that trend is going to continue. Um, but it's always interesting just to see how it balances and what ends up being some of the least read genres, because I always find it interesting to see what I thought I read a lot of, but I actually only read a few of. I find it very interesting to compare to my own impressions. Then I've got my little favourites tree which is this one here and it's little pot plants on like a little step ladder which I was going to fill in with my favourite books of the year so far. Um, what I had filled in is Jurassic Park for January, um, the Bromance Book Club for February and the 11th How to Train Your Dragon in March so I'd have to have a think about what did I read. Let me see. Alright I read quite a bit in April. I read more of the How to Train Your Dragon series. Going by my ratings and how I'm feeling about things, I probably have to say that a fur love story is probably my favourite. Um, this was unexpected, it was something that Chris got me as a Valentine's gift this year actually. It was a really enjoyable like YA contemporary romance. And then in May my favourite book I, that I read was Lessons in Chemistry. This was one of my birthday books from the previous year and I just loved this. This met and surpassed all of my expectations. And then in June, and I actually read this immediately after Lessons in Chemistry, my favourite book was The Isle of the Gods by Amy Kaufman. This was just brilliant. I'm so hooked and I can't stop thinking about this series still. I'm really looking forward to book two coming out. In July it would have to be Fourth Wing because like, I don't know, Fourth Wing was just brilliant. Like if you've read it you know and if you haven't read it then you're probably sick of hearing about it so moving on. In August, um, I so last month, I surprised myself and I'm gonna say The Adventures of Amina al Sarafi. I loved this in the end. It, it was such a slow burn. You can check out my review if you want to hear more of my thoughts. I wasn't anticipating that this would become such a favourite when I started reading this because of how long it took to get into but by the end and when I finished this was just this was just perfect. I loved everything about it. So that is everything I have for you today. Those are all my goals that I set for myself in 2023 and where I'm at with them. I do not feel it is as much of a disaster it has been in previous years, nor do I think I'm too drastically behind at this point in September, especially considering the disruption of moving house and how much that completely cut me at the knees for how much reading I was getting done. So I am really hoping that when we check in again in December or January to see how I've gone over the whole year, I'm so hoping that I will be able to tell you that I have like made really great progress in a few more of those goals. Hopefully the friend goal, um, I think as I start tackling my Christmas books, I will just happen to also then tick off some of those friend uh, goals and recommendations. So let's see what happens. Let me know in the comments down below how your reading goals are going for the year and what some of your favourite books have been. But other than that, I will see you in my next video. Goodbye. <laughs>